Erez is live with a Skelly Donut Lolo going after the big Skelly Donut value here. Zadik Ali is live with Super Dragons. Now, I have a feeling that we're going to see this Super Archer attack that they've been using paired with the Super Dragons that has proved to be very, very powerful for them. Hey, it's what on guys? Welcome back to Clash with Eric. We are live for the grand finals of the Itsu Cup. It's Tribe Gaming versus Empire Lovers. Now, Empire Lovers is the unknown team here, the underdog. They've taken out the Queen Walkers, they've taken out Inquisition, and they took out what is now Strut Esports. It was priorly alternate attacks. They are in an absolute roll right now. They missed a perfect war in the last round against Strut Esports by two buildings. And now they'll see if they can continue their march all the way into a grand finals championship win against Tribe Gaming now. Fluxy on defense as he sends in a Flame Flinger in from the top corner there. Going to use that to form a bit of a funnel. The Queen comes in on the opposite side. The Super Dragons will go in through the Eagle Artillery. And they can start to cross his way through the base here. A bit of a box base on defense. A Ward Builder nice and early. And no blimp or anything to take the Town Hall. Like, that Town Hall is very, very, very far from his entry. And with the Flame Flinger in the top corner there, he won't have that as a support for taking the town hall down he'll just rely on everybody circling all the way around the base here and still having enough punch to take it at the end the super dragon on the right side was taking that expo keeping that flame flinger safe from that expo all it continues to get shots over there it will take that down that flame flinger will continue on and continue to pick up value and then it'll eventually drop out its troops inside but the super dragons are going a pretty long distance here but he does need to get that single inferno down but go ahead and freeze it he's got a rage not raging just yet. Flame Flinger will take out the scatter shot up on the top side of the base there where the World Champion starts in. Rage up the heroes and the Super Dragons as everybody arrives in the Town Hall together. And it looks like Siraj is going to be opening up with a triple here in this Grand Finals match. This team is just feeling unstoppable. Their attacks are seeming very, very consistent, and they're racking up a lot of points here. That Flame Flinker goes all the way to the end of the attack here, and they get it done here with a Super Dragon attack as their opener. Rick Harris is live with a Skelly Donut Lolo going after the big Skelly Donut value here, sniping off the CC and both of the Infernos and gutting out the core of the base and he walks away with all of those targets and also drew out a couple Teslas in the core of the base there so he knows where those are now. He drops some Stinky Goblins to go in towards the Town Hall. Taking out the Collectors and the Storages along the area around that Town Hall and will easily step in there and take it down there. He's one more for Traps. He's safe. He can drop in the rest, and I don't even think he needs to put an invisibility on it. He does anyways, as a failsafe. It was really close to the edge of the base there. He didn't really need to use an invisibility. But he still has three haste and two freezes for his Lalo. And he'll charge his heroes into the base. If the King will pop his ability, get that multi-inferno down. Now there's one multi-inferno still standing on the base here. The King and the Queen able to break the ring of defenses. The ring is very, very emphasize when you do a skelly don't attack which is why this attack got that name is because after it clears out a nice hole in the middle of the base it leaves a donut shape but the heroes need to take a bite out of the donut so the lalo can circle around and stay together here and follow their lava hounds go to the setup here rush this enemy queen needs to get these headhunters to survive through the king and still have enough punch to reach all the way to the enemy world champion here he does have his Royal Champion still on standby. Able to get that King out of the way. His Royal Champion steps through. The Henders cross through. Double Cannons chipping away there, but the Royal Champion assisting with that. He's got the Poison onto the enemy Royal Champion and is able to take her down. Well, Tess is here getting missed. I one in the middle of the base there specifically. About to get something to turn back and go for it, but the Henders go for it. What? <laughs> the Henders tried to go for it at least. But everybody's kind of skipping it for now. Glamour taking the lead here. Minions getting burned up by the Tesla. Maybe they have enough to take it down over there. Wow, they do. Okay. Minions and Pups able to overwhelm the Tesla. The World Champion pops their ability. 
gets the shot into the single inferno it locks onto her immediately but he's got so many blues here he's gonna completely overrun the backside rc gets burned up but he's got plenty to close it out here and rakirez with a skelly donut lalo takes the risk delivers on the skelly donut and crushes the base tribe gaming starts the war off time Zadik Ali is live with Super Dragons. Now, I have a feeling that we're going to see this Super Archer attack that they've been using paired with the Super Dragons that has proved to be very, very powerful for them. He sends the blimp now. Keep an eye on this blimp and watch for Super Archers popping out of it. How far does it go? Super Dragons? Charged our way in. The blimp sails all the way in. Lands near the town hall. What's he got inside? It is Super Archers and Super Wizards. Lands in the tornado trap, though. Pulls him towards the town hall a little bit. But the Super Archers, still alive. Oh, wait. The Super Arch... Oh, the blimp! Is not getting the value that he's looking for here. Because the tornado trap pulled the Super Archers and the Super Wizards into the CC... Or into the town hall poison, I mean. And that's just the whole attack down, doesn't it? Neat rocks! Looking good on a defense on that one. Found a way to stop that. We have not seen anybody defend that attack just yet. But that tornado trap, exactly where it needed to be to stop that attack and put those super archers in danger and pull them into the Town Hall Poison and the Blast as they made their landing. So with a Queen ability still intact, he'll try to get as much as he can. One Super Dragon over on the right side will try to keep on powering through. The Warden left stranded on his own down at the bottom of the base. There, the Queen still has her ability. She's got her Unicorn, but the Grand Expo is chipping away at her. Dragon might be able to power through that Archer Tower there. We'll see how far he can get the percentage here, but I don't think he has much of a chance to go all the way to the Triple here because he just lost his Unicorn. The Grand Expo continues to chip away. Warden still picking up percentage down at the bottom. To climb all the way up here to right about 90% here, but the Warden is almost on its own here as the Super Dragon will get taken out by the single Inferno, and looks like this Warden will just continue to rack up a little bit more percentage and climb it into the mid-90s here. Still good percentage. Still good percentage. But this team easily could have cleared out the rest of the base there had he got the Super Arches to clear just a couple more buildings here. Like... He didn't need a lot more. He honestly did not need a lot more to make that work. And it still almost happened for him here. If he could have got the single down, would have came very, very close here. But this one still, even after that, is going to rack in a 96%. Nibrox is live, and we are coming in with a Blizzard Lalo on this one here, by the looks of it. It's in the blizzard to go next to the bomb tower, not land on top of the bomb tower, so he doesn't actually take the blast to his wizards. He can take him out. Gotta be careful with that. They're all the way to the edge of the base here. They're all the way almost to the core of the base. Doesn't actually clear the core itself, though, but does get a big chunk of the base there taken out and got the CC pull. And we're seeing these Lava Hound Ice Golem CCs. A lot of Empire lovers here. Definitely using this CC, and they've been really consistent with using that CC. So I wonder if Tribe will use that information to their advantage and try to catch an attack here without actually having to fight the CC at all. We'll see. But he perfectly handles that CC, drives his queen in, joins the king, and they'll work their way in. The king will take out the enemy world champion, puts a header down to assist with that, and he'll drive his way in, fight off this enemy king, and... Hopefully drive all the way into the Eagle Artillery and the Multi-Inferno here. But I wonder if he starts to Lalo in from the right side and tries to work it in parallel with the heroes. But he kind of wants the Multi-Inferno down before he even thinks about that. He puts for a champion to go to the core of the base there. She's going to go in after the Multi-Inferno and the Sweepers. And he can gut out that core. But he does still need to get this Town Hall down. He can Lalo through Town Hall. Lalo is one of the few attacks that can survive through the town hall and still get some really, really good value because the freeze and the haste to get you out of the town hall poison quickly tends to perform better than almost every other attack at going through the town hall directly. But he'll pop that RC ability, gets the sweepers down, no sweepers to contend with, and he starts in the Lalo in for the bottom side as his queen dies out. Down to the Lalo here. Needs to get the percentage 
above a 96%, but a triple would also obviously put them into the lead. There's the haste, freezes in place. Up that warden, carry him out of the town hall poison very quickly. But the single inferno did get missed there. The warden sitting back in the town hall poison, taking some excessive damage there. Needs to get this enemy queen down on the left side as well. Hound is taking it for now. The queen follows the hound. They get the headhunters down. Where are his headhunters? They have not been deployed yet. Saw some cannons in the area that he's probably worried about there. He tries to snipe out the cannons first. Tends to the headhunters. They lock onto the queen. All right, expo locks on. Does he get the expo down? He got the queen down. And he got the expo down. The headhunters are protected. Almost through here. Ooh, he's dropping fast, though. He's dropping fast. Nebrax is looking like he's going to fall a bit short on this one. But how high can you get a percentage here? Ladies and gentlemen, we will stay tied on stars here as both teams open with a triple, but then follow it up with a miss, and we'll see what the percentage can come in as. He loses his ward in the middle of the base there. He'll get up a little bit more percentage, but it does look like Tribe Gaming is going to be playing from behind. 88% there, down by six buildings. No, eight buildings. Eight buildings. Warning is live. Ladies and gentlemen, we are into a queen charge Lalo attack here, but a lot of sneaky goblins and not a lot of balloons. He's got a flame flinger. I'm gonna use sneaky goblins while he's doing a queen charge, which is difficult to manage both of those at the same time, but he'll wall break on the left side. Maybe you get the king to go in and get that multi-inferno down. Get these sneaky goblins go to the town hall. Gotta get these swords out of the way. Got sword is all around the area there. Lots of investment onto these sneaky goblins. Sending the flame flinger in from the right side. Go get that cannon down first. We'll have to contend with um, Teslas in the area and some ground skies. Oh, oh, ground skies, ground skies, ground skies. Okay, put the minion down. Can it work fast enough to save it? Get the sneaky goblin down as well. I don't know that he needs that sneaky goblin. He's got five more sneaky goblins for the town hall. He cannot afford. Even one sneaky goblin to die at the town hall. Or he could be risking a one star. Here they come. Here they come. They lock on. Invisibility is perfect. He's got it. Town hall will drop. Good control here. Good control. Flame Flinger survives. He puts on the Road Champion to work with the king. The Champion will duck in front of that Flame Flinger as that Flame Flinger will try to survive. He'll. Get that ground expo under control. The flame finger will go into picking up these archer towers for just a moment. Not going to last much longer. We'll be dropping out his contents very shortly. Makes the road champion invisible. Pops his RC ability. Flame finger almost goes down, but now drops out some balloons and a dragon runner. They'll work their way backwards. We need to get this enemy queen down. He freezes her up. Does he have the protection? He's got a couple of headers going there with the road champion. They all lock in together. Everybody onto the queen. That's got to take her down. And it does on the final strike of the road champion. And the balloons collapse in across the top of the base here, but he's not out of this yet. Queen stuck in a wall. Lots of traps at the biggest pack of balloons in the middle of the base there. Dragon Rider out of the Flame Flinger. With almost all the stands here. The Warden working with a couple of pups here, but attacking a non-defensive structure. Inferno locks onto this Dragon Rider and is going to soften up the... Single Inferno a little bit for the Queen. The Warden steps through, taking the Queen's targets. The Balloon steps through as well, but the Queen gets targeted. She needs to pop her ability. She can still pull this through. He still has 30 seconds to work with, but the Queen bails off to the left side. Does not attack the wall. Circles out, and the Single Inferno stays standing. He can, he can one-shot it. He can one-shot it from here. He can still pull this through. Queen Charge still going strong. But he has 20 seconds, less than 20 seconds, and he's got to get not only through the single inferno, but through multiple storages, and the storages are slightly weakened up. 10 seconds to close it out here. Oh, she goes to the single inferno first. Not a problem there. Four seconds. No, it's not going to make it. It is going to be a time fail. 99%. Tribe Gaming granted another opportunity. Take the lead. Fluxy is live. We got ourselves a queen charge into dragon rider attack also with the flame flinger they'll put in the flame flinger in for the top course and then a hog to go lure out any grass skellies and to draw tests out of the ground quickly take that down the drama there push that uh flame flinger all the way to the eagle artillery while the queen charge begins and you want to get the eagle artillery down before the eagle can activate on him queen takes the defenses in the area and he drops in a wizard to form the funnel no Teslas cause any problems with the funnel here. 
Fair way right in. The queen can reach both scatter shots from this town hall compartment. What is this base? Both scatter shots are reachable from the town hall compartment, and the funnel is like just natural on this base here with those natural gaps. I wonder if this is trolled. Is this a bait? It feels like it could be a bait. But he has another Lava Hound and another Ice Golem out on defense. Which is uh, another base with that same CC. And they used that same CC all the way through when they fought Stra Esports in the round before. Let's see if uh, we continue to see that CC on defense here, but... Tribe Gaming and Strut, neither were able to take advantage of that in the attack so far. They all had to pull it out. They all had to fight it. He is able to get the freeze down to lock up the air defense there. To get the Dragon Rider to take it out there. He charges his way into the World Champion. He has the Headhunters in position. They will take it down there. The King deploys up top. The King will work with the Flame Flinger to go into the Testus up there. More Headhunters up there to get him through that enemy King. The Queen charge is going strong. Got the Scatter Shots down. And she can continue into the middle of the base here. As she does have minions chipping away at the bottom side there to keep the Queen centered on the base. And she will attack a wall and continue to charge her way through. Flame Flinger is going to be opening up soon. And very likely dropping down more Dragon Riders and more Blooms, but he has to get to the enemy queen on the backside. He pops the ward, but he delayed it way late in the attack there to protect Headhunters to charge in. Takes that enemy queen down. Oh no, not quite. The Electric Owl's gonna have to take the last shot there and gets it. RC assist as well. And everybody's charging through to the backside of the base here. All collapse in on the last couple defenses. It's absolutely crushed and Fluxy gets it done for Tribe Gaming. And they take the lead. One star up. But a percentage advantage is still into Empire Lover's favor. There's only two more attacks for each team. To decide who will be crowned our Itsu Cup Grand Finals Champion. Muhammad Ali. Live with another Super Dragon attack. They were able to stop the last one because of the tornado. But it came in very, very close. And it might be a very similar attack here. If he can land in Super Archers on top of the Warden statue, he can nuke out the multi Emperor in the middle. He can get the Sweepers. He can get the CC. He can get the Town Hall. And we'll see if it is, once again, going to be these Super Archers that are actually starting to completely dominate the meta as a whole. These Super Archer bombs are extremely, extremely powerful. Let's take a couple Black Mines there to the Blimp. Ooh, where did it land? Is it inside the CC compartment? I think it is. I think he's inside. Nope, he breaks out. He breaks out. Goblins end up breaking the wall and go towards the town hall. Super archers are in there. They have access to everything that they need to be able to get access into. The wizards trying to stay protected there, but they are not getting the town hall just yet. They may or may not get it. Freeze the town hall. Ooh, that was for nothing there. Super archers continue to chip away. No battle builders in the area, so the town hall will stay at low HP, but the super dragons have all veered off to the left side. You know, have to have the road champion go in there and pick it up. See if that cost him the raid. Maybe he can still work with that. That relatively low HP. Well, my music died. Oh, it's back. <laughs> Alright, here we go. We got the Super Wall Breaker. Gonna give a little bit more access into that compartment. Makes his approach. The Rare Champion. Making her final approach. She still has her ability. I think he's still got it. Yeah, he does. He's got a queen ability. <laughs> no freaking way. That is wild, guys. That is wild. <laughs> so I got distracted there. My uh, stream music was uh, glitching out there. Separate from the music that you hear on YouTube. But <laughs> well, yeah, that was... That's another triple here for Empire Lovers. And they'll pass it back over to Tribe. And we'll see if uh, Tried Gaming is able to get this triple on the board and maintain their lead here. Because that is a percentage advantage for Empire Lovers no matter what. Kronos is live from Tribe Gaming. If he gets the triple here, they maintain their lead. He'll send it to the Goblins at the Town Hall. Doesn't even need to make those invisible. So that Town Hall is very close to the edge of the base. Very cheap investment there. I take that out and a bit of lightning towards the middle and he'll try to connect the heroes to 
attached to where the lightning took out the big hole in the base and you'll start to charge its way in. A decent amount of value with that lightning too. Taking out all the way into the core of the base there, getting the sweepers, getting the scatter shot, picking up some of those exterior buildings there and he'll easily connect that with his heroes. And stays away from the CC. Now we talked about that earlier here where they've been running all Ice Golem and Lava Hound CCs. Unfortunately, his headhunters went in there and pulled the Ice Golems out. I think he was trying to avoid pulling them up. I think there's another Ice Golem in there, a triple Ice Golem on defense here. The Queen will be able to actually fight those right now, but uh, she would like to get that expo down before she did. The Stone Sammer. Okay, fighting off that Ice Golem. There's still one more Ice Golem that has not been deployed. The World Champion will end up pulling it. Queen will survive and get that expo down and that'll keep her protected and she does lose her unicorn though so she's not going to get top back in her hp but he has the soul summer open up near the multi inferno the warrior ability comes down protecting not only the lalo but also the royal champion hound crosses through protected by the warrior ability but the warrior ability fades before it ends up taking all the traps that were chasing it so it does pop strong push here going queen's not doing anything uh, other than clean up behind the lalo here but the lalo's pushing strong there's one more freeze to make the queen actually do do something. I said do do. And he will charge its way in to take out the multi inferno. Oh, no, it's a single inferno and the Tesla farm and easily power through the end of the base here with an RC ability. And they take the lead and they maintain it. Tribe Gaming. Off to a very, very strong start for this war. And we'll see if they can hold it through. Only a couple more attacks to go. Ladies and gentlemen, Empire Lovers holds the percentage advantage above Tribe Gaming, but if they want to win this Grand Finals match, they need a triple right now. Coming in with more Super Dragons. Rikira's on defense. If Tribe Gaming gives up this triple here, they will be forced to triple to still win as empire lovers will hold the percentage advantage all the way to the end he sends in the blimp the blimp will get the crash damage to get the air defense out as well he'll get that town hall without any issue there and the super dragons will continue their march towards the core lots of headers go to the warden right there lots of damage on the warden but he gets them intercepted there by the super dragons saves the warden the king and queen on the outside of the base here will work their way around no wall breakers to get them to punch in but the warden Continues to work with the Super Dragons. They clear out the Infernos in the core. Push across the enemy queen. Rage and Freeze takes them through the air defense. The Warden and the enemy queen. Looking good here. Looking really good, honestly. The Road Champion unfortunately gets stalled up by this enemy king. He tries to freeze on both the Expo and the enemy king. They're trying to save the Road Champion. Ooh, that might cost him. That could cost him. Queen still staying safe, though. But she's got the king coming up on her backside there. Ooh, this king is coming in clutch on defense. Okay, down to the last. I don't think he's gonna make it. Ladies and gentlemen, Tribe Gaming is looking like they got the defense on this one as the enemy king holds the line and shuts down another one of their attacks. The Super Dragon is not gonna be able to go the distance. He needed his world champion alive, he needed his queen alive, and the king. Took them both out and stopped this attack in its tracks here. <laughs> you don't really think about the king being the deciding factor on an air attack. But it's crazy how often he is. 88% and the king proves once again he's the best air defense in the game. Tribe Gaming is a two star away from closing out the Itsu Cup Grand Finals Champion. Exquisist is live and he needs a two star to lock in the win and it doesn't look like he's taking any risk he'll be diving directly after the town hall to open up his attack here pushing the queen off to the left he can wall break at the wizard tower and drive right in there the healers are maybe at a good angle here it's hard to say right now keep an eye on the healers approach to the town hall here to make sure that they don't go inside the range of it they might be okay they are. Okay, good. Damage onto his unicorn, but he'll, sa he'll save the unicorn before the town hall goes down. The scanner shot will ultimately 
take it out though, so. Deal with what you got. To get that expo down. Got a partial CC pull there. First star is locked in. Flame Flinger is working its way in from the top of the base there to go after the Eagle Artillery. He still has the hybrid here. Now the Flame Flinger does a great job at funneling when he started early for a hybrid attack. Very similar to what we see with the with the Siege Barracks there, but it can just kind of go in there and actually take out some major defenses while you're continuing on with the Queen Charge. Just worked independently, which is why it's so strong. But the King will come in on the outside, using the Flame Flinger to form a funnel to drive the King in to go fight this enemy Queen. Queen can continue all the way in to go take out the Bomb Towers. This is looking really, really nice here. Queen is able to get the first Bomb Tower down. That further funnels the Hybrid as they push in from the left side. Get this enemy king down. A header came down to go in there and take him out. Looking good here. The A couple of archers trickling up in the top side there. But the Midas aren't going anywhere near that flame flinger up there. Because it funnels so deep into the base here. Looking so perfect on this attack so far. Be able to reach up that other bomb tower, I think, before the Midas lock onto it. And that'll prevent even more bomb damage here on this hybrid as they continue to march their way through. Flame flinger staying intact there. He's got a whole bunch of giant bombs going off up top. Still has another heal spell. He'll pop it now as he makes his approach into the Wizard Tower and the Multi Inferno. Still has an RC ability and a Queen ability. This is crushed, guys. This is absolutely crushed. Even if Empire Lovers was able to get that triple on the board there, even if they were able to match the craziness that Tribe Gaming put up here, Tribe Gaming would have ultimately clutched it in the end there but there we go with a swag invisibility that polishes off the itsu cup here and crowns us a champion tribe gaming went all the way through and they will win the championship gg